Okay, so this tutorial is going to cover the new linking system between Revit files uh, and 3ds Max in the 2013 suite. And what the new linking system allows us to do is start the visualization process in 3D Studio Max much earlier than, earlier than we've been able to in the past. Essentially by taking um, incomplete Revit files that are work in progress, pushing them to 3D Studio Max, and then allowing those updates to happen, uh, you know, not quite real time, but really close. Uh, you know, you only have to click a button to make the update happen. And this has been something that's kind of been working between Revit and 3D Studio Max, but in the updates for 2013, the process is much smoother, it's much cleaner, uh, and it continues to get better. Speaking with people at Autodesk in particular, this link eventually uh, is anticipated to work both directions. In other words, we'd be able to model some things in 3D Studio Max, have them show up in Revit, and vice versa. And when you think about that as a workflow, it's, it's pretty interesting uh, because the programs, the two different programs, have unique tool sets and unique capabilities, and it would be nice to have those meld together in one seamless project between the two platforms. So this is this project I've been working on in Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, in particular, most of the model is coming together pretty well, except for this residential component, which is a renovation in addition to the only building that's on the site. And you can note right now that is looking pretty terrible. So I'm getting ready to dive into some more extensive design work on that. But I would need to be able to do visualization beyond Revit's rendering capabilities um, as well. So I want to go ahead and push this file to 3D Studio Max while I'm modeling in Revit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate this portion first because this is a reasonably chunky model to begin with. So if I can isolate a portion of it, I can work a little bit faster, especially for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Isolate Element tool and have this component of the building as well as the site. I'm going to rename this view, or actually I'm going to duplicate the view, and I'm just going to rename it Residential. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is the linking process is actually going to link a specific view into your 3D Studio Max file. And that might seem a little bit odd at first, but I suspect the main reason why they did this is a lot of times our Revit models have a lot of junk in them that I don't necessarily want to push to 3D Studio Max. For instance, if I have a structure hidden inside of a wall, or I might have something that is a coplanar object, which might not be a big modeling issue in Revit, but once I animate, it sort of turns into a flickering plane of doom and death to the overall appearance of the animation. So this gives me the chance to sort of isolate and only take the pieces that I want without having to actually make full modifications to my Revit file or have a Revit file that is sort of the max only file and please nobody else touch it. I can set up a specific view and take only the geometry that I want into 3D Studio Max. So with this done, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick save. Um, I want to make sure that I've saved so that you can see um, this latest view list, and I'm going to pop into 3D Studio Max, the big M, import, don't click on the import, wait for this link to show up, and I'm going to select the file that I've been working on right here, open, and it's going to take a few seconds um, to, to begin this connection process. Again, I'm going to select the specific view out of the 3D view set. Um, called residential, and I'm going to say OK and attach this file. My guess is that there's a little bit of voodoo going on in the background right now. Um, the creation of, I don't know, some type of hidden FBX file uh, that's going to match geometry with all of the texture mapping, the lighting setup, so on and so forth to make all these things work. So the first time you do this, it does take a few minutes. Um, uh, again, it's, it's sort of analyzing right now as well the entire complexity of this project, which is oh, fully entouraged with furniture, um, lots of windows, lots of mullions, lots of geometry, um, and some pretty complex geometry too in terms of the bending and folding shapes uh, that took a little bit of time to create on that Revit file.
And if you notice right down here, there's this little linking FBX file. Even though we actually didn't build an FBX file, there's probably something going on in terms of the creation of that file behind the scenes uh, that 3D Studio Max and Revit's using. So once this wraps up, we have a little manage links piece. Hopefully. There we go. So uh, right now, this is set up to attach a new file. You can see currently my linked file is this Revit file with residential being the view. And inside of my presets, uh, I'm looking at exactly how that link is happening. Oh, and that's, you know, guess what? Uh, these tutorials are kind of fun sometimes. One of the reasons why that took so long is it took it brought everything in with it. Let's go back to Revit. If you notice, I still only have temporary hide and isolate turned on. So let's go ahead and say apply to view. The big R, save. And this will actually give us our first chance to look at a link. So I'm going to come back and say import, and we want to look at the link manager. So I'm going right back to the same system. I must have hit entirely the wrong button. Import link Revit. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I'm going at this the wrong way. I'm actually looking at establishing a new link. What I really want to do is come right over here to my utilities, more, and the, the what I should have been looking for was the file link manager. I'm going to click OK on that. Files, and you can see there's a little red flag here, which means this file is it's ready to be reloaded. So I'm going to click Reload. Okay. And then close that. And now it's updated my scene. So it, essentially, by applying in Revit, applying this view, making sure it's not temporary, I've got the scene that I'm actually more specifically looking for now. And, you know, inside of 3DS Max now, I can start coming in and doing things like adding an American Elm to a project in Mexico, which is a little bit odd but that's okay so what I'm gonna do next now is if you notice there's a lot of detail that's currently lacking in this um, so just as a quick example um, this is an exterior patio we need to get a handrail across this so I'm gonna go back into my Revit file much faster to build a uh, handrail in Revit than in 3D Studio Max in my opinion and plus I'm gonna need it on my construction documentation so I'm gonna come in here railing guardrail rectangular and I'm gonna be a little bit sloppy for the sake of speed so I'm just gonna set this inside by a reasonably arbitrary amount just like that complete that loop finish the handrail look at it in my 3d view flip it because I've got the actual handrail element to the outside of the guardrail so that's pretty good now. I'm happy with that. Quick save. Back into 3D Studio Max. And then we're going to go back to this file link manager. Reload. So obviously you wouldn't want to do this with every single minor addition or modification that you make. But doing that as you work along, um, you can quickly see that you can get through some things really, really quickly. And no longer are you kind of in a situation where you feel like you need to have the Revit file 100% done before you start pushing it into 3D Studio Max to set up camera views, um, to do more FX shots, things like that that Revit is not capable of.